Hey guys, welcome to another Chess Tactics video. Uh, continuing on with what we've been doing this whole time, I'll be doing simple checkmate puzzles. And the point of the the point of these videos is for me to be able to read the board, or as an exercise in reading the board, as well as looking for the mating tactic. So yeah, it's going to be another slow grind today. Uh, and let's actually raise the difficulty to harder again. Then we'll start here. So it looks like black has six pawns and I've got five. His queen's on my side. My queen's in danger. My rooks are looking pretty good uh, facing the king his pawn structure, his pawn shield looks like it can be destroyed thanks to my rook on g4 here um, yeah my queen's in danger there's queen a1 potentials but that looks kind of not like an issue king to c2 and then if queen goes to a4 then king to uh king to b1 oh well queen can't even go to a4 anyway because of my rooks so yeah i'm not too worried i don't think um i think what i'm looking at here i'm either thinking if we're looking for a force check or a f yeah a force tactic here I'm thinking uh, sacrifice sacrificing the rook if the king moves over then there's queen takes h6 and that's checkmate if uh, rook takes on g7 and king takes on g7 then there's also queen to g6 check and then once king moves back to g8 then there will be queen to h7 check mate um, let's just look at the line one more time rook takes g7 king takes queen to h6 check king to g8 then queen to queen to h7 checkmate yeah i think what looks good Alright, so it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I was on vacation visiting my family in California, so it's good to be back. I feel a little out of sorts. I, uh, I did something horrible last night and ate a bunch of cookies and crackers and today was an absolute light nightmare on my stomach. I have turned into an old man and I, uh, I accept the sins that I've committed. Uh, this is an interesting state here. Looks like the king doesn't have a lot of flight squares. He has five pawns. I've got, looks like, six pawns. He's got two rooks and three minor pieces. So he's up by two minor pieces. And I don't even know how and none of my pieces seem to be very active. My rook has a half open file. My bishop has a half open file, but what does a bishop care about half open files? Uh, rooks aren't even connected. But on the other side, his stuff doesn't look that good either. I don't think my king is in any kind of danger right now, so that's good. And I just remembered that I, uh, what I promised to do earlier on in a previous video, to just continue looking at the board from an earlier position. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a fairly short game. All of this 
makes decent sense. I don't know if I would have moved my rook over to c1, but that's what he decided to do. I think putting that rook onto e8, that's pretty good. That's something I definitely would have done. <coughs> the pawn push. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what that's about. I guess he's just trying to open up this file more. Possibly. S sacrifice the knight. I guess he saw what he needed to do. So he did a little bit of a distraction maneuver. And now thanks to that distraction, um, the line that I'm seeing here is queen to h4. There's no way to block that check except for a pawn to g3, at which point there's nothing defending g3, so queen takes g3, and the king has no flight squares, and there's no way to stop this mate from coming. So I think that's it. So queen to h4 check, pawn g3, queen takes g3, and that's checkmate. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, looks like my queen was taken. Let's uh, go back a couple of steps and see what this game looked like. I think this is one of the best parts about Lee Chess. Their really pretty UI and ease of use makes it very easy to learn at an optimal pace, it feels like. Um, so let's see here, we're in the mid game. Looks like we're kind of even on most things. Yeah, six pawns, six pawns. We got a, we got a fairly, fairly aggressive pawn on e5. That's nice. Uh, this looks okay to me. That doesn't look bad. Uh, Especially because his pawn on c4 still blocks his uh, bishop, so that's very nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, there's a aggressive push, an h5. Uh, h4 looks really good. Not a lot of places for the queen to go, too. So got to be extra careful about this, I think. That's good. Asking some questions about the queen. Queen slides out of the way. Rook to d8 looks pretty good. Nice counterattack. Mm, his queen is trying to look for some squares. Instead of moving away, I guess there was also this. But thanks to that aggressive pawn that we were talking about on e5, we would be opening up the king's side a lot more. After all of the trades on uh, f6, we could potentially see like queen to f4 as well, pinning that last pawn and then being able to take it. So that'd be pretty good. So was it better to move queen to c5? I don't know. I guess so? Hard for me to say. I'm not a smart guy. We got two defenders still on this pawn, so that's good, but this is coming. This is coming soon at some point. That's interesting. I don't necessarily know if that's just for doubling up on the D file, or if he sees some kind of potential tactic here. It's very aggressive, but I like it. Removing the defender on the knight seems a little interesting. Like, what happens if we just move bishop back to e3? That pins the knight, which I feel like is even more dangerous. Because then there's 
potentials for things like uh what is it knight d4 putting two attackers on that knight I guess we'll see where this goes okay he's doing that I guess it puts two attackers on here for a possible free pawn as well as opening this up and then further putting on pressure on c6 <coughs> they trade this pawn is defended by the rook queen gets out of that whole ungodly mess over there he's got some he's got a nice pass pawn though and he's he's close he's close to moving putting pressure on that bishop uh, Bishop has one flight square, another flight square. He's got a couple of options. Alright. Moves the bishop out of the way. What are you thinking, white? Okay. Putting further pressure on the bishop while also pinning that pawn to f7 if the bishop does decide to move away. I think this is the probably the reaction that makes the most sense. This would be interesting. Rook to f6? No. Okay. Opening up the file so that we pin the bishop instead. Okay. Bishop has nice backwards defenders though, so that's good. This rook is now pinned. Thankfully, there's a defender to the queen. Okay. Pawn takes. Bishop can't take. Moving the rook out to possibly become a more useful defender than just being on h8. Doubling up my rooks, or white's rooks. It's not my game. Oh my god, what if this is my game? No, it's not. This was played against the uh, National Master. Damn, that's awesome. Okay. There's a bit of focus on the e6 pawn now. But not enough. If rook takes, rook takes. Bishop can't move. So that e pawn is looking strong. Going for some tradesies. This is pretty amazing. I didn't see that for a second. I was like... Wow, but there are two attackers here. He's got two defenders. He's feeling good about it. Queen takes queen. Oh la la. Hmm. And this is where we're at. Okay. So, if I was in game, my initial thought would be, well, then either I have to get my queen back is what I would think, but I would also think if I get my queen back... I still need to get rid of this shenanigans. The nice thing is if I took the queen and rook takes, my rook is on the back file. But his is on the second file. So I don't or I mean second rank, back rank. So I don't know. Feels okay. This pawn is now gonna be hurt. Mm. Let's see. He has five pawns. I've got five pawns. We have two passers. His, I feel like, has much more chance of surviving thanks to the B pawn as well, whereas mine is in a bit of danger there. Am I worried about my king's safety? No, I still got my uh, rook on the back rank. My pawn shield looks good. Him, on the other hand, it doesn't look that great. Um, candid candidate moves that come to mind. Pushing the pawn, forcing the king to move. Possibly taken. Um, we could trade, though. There could be something interesting there. 
but as soon as this rook is uh, off the back rank, there's the back rank mate threat. The other thought that I had was the first one I had is to sack my rook. Rook sack. If king runs away, there's rook to e7. Uh, king will have to move away once more. Rook comes back. Or actually, instead of the rook coming back, you know what I'd do? I'd just move the uh, rook on d1 over to d8. And that looks like a checkmate. Hmm. So then... Another option would be if he moves over there. This isn't even the line that I'm really interested in, but I guess I'm just calculating it for fun. On e7, there's king f7. And that doesn't look like that really goes anywhere. My bishop's under attack. I can take a rook. But then this rook is unguarded. And the queen is a tricky mistress. I feel like there's a lot that could happen. Push. Move. Not a lot of ways to keep the juggling going. So I think rook taking on e8 looks good then. Rook takes e8. Oh, I was calculating that line. That's embarrassing. Rook takes e8. And then what we calculated was king moves over and then he's going to get wrecked very soon so rook takes e8 oh king can't even move to uh, f7 what am I saying because the pawn exists there so he'd have to go to uh, g7 and then uh, yeah I guess rook could just come over here and uh, since the bishop controls f6 and h6 the king would be in checkmate so if rook takes on e8, what if king takes on e8? Well then there's rook to d8, defended by the bishop. Uh, and thanks to this pawn controlling the f7 square and the bishop controlling the e7 square, the king would actually be... Uh, there would be no flight squares for the king, so that looks pretty good as well. So both options look very good. Okay. And I think those are the only two options available. So let's see what he does. That's a checkmate. Cool beans. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm slowly... <coughs> I feel like I'm slowly getting there again. This one's a nice one. I uh, I think I already see the mate. That's a very cool, beautiful little mate there. But let's move back and read the board as if we're playing the game. Or look at the board as if we're playing the game. Uh, try to mimic that environment as much as possible. Move 10 and already a lot of things are off the board. Black's pieces are not very well... Uh, developed. On the other hand, I'm really digging the diagonals that I have on white's side here. <sighs> when it comes to pawns, he has seven. I've got five. So there was a little bit of pawn gambiting going on. Minor pieces are the same. Major pieces are the same. King is stopped from being able to castle as well. So if I was playing a game, this, I mean, this would be not a very surprising game that I would have, definitely. This is something that could definitely happen. Except I'm nowhere near as high a rank as these guys are. So, okay. D6 to open up possible, possible diagonal for the bishop. Oh, and knight's trying to come in. Maybe trying to get into a better square. His knight's being developed. Alright. Not a lot of flight squares for the queen. Only one. But it's a decent flight square. Ah, uh, okay. Decides to trade the knight for the queen. 
or I mean the knight for the bishop. So that gives us that gives us the double double bishops against the double knights. That's uh, always a fun game. I usually lose those even if I have the bishops because uh, I'm terrible. Knights getting in the way, trying to reduce some of the flight squares that the bishop has, but. I mean, the bishop can always go back to b3 right now, so doesn't seem too bad. Shooing away the knight. Knight goes, yay, and moves over to g6. What do I think about g6? g6 is all right. A little pressure on f4. I could see f5 coming, just placing this bishop on an insane square. But then there's knight to f4 being able to take. Do I want a doubled e-file with a pawn on e6? If I had a d-pawn, I'd say yes. But in this situation, I don't know. That doesn't seem that good. So considering that, maybe defending that, uh, taking control of that f4 square would be a good idea. Let's see. Oh, coming with the check. I feel like this could be met with uh, b4 or b5 fairly quickly. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if either b5 or c6 are dangerous. I don't see a way to punish either of the moves. Let's see what they do. Blocking with the knight on the other side, okay. Okay. That's a lot of moves for the pieces. But I guess it's necessary. He still probably wants to castle badly. There's just no way though. Okay. Bishop's coming in there. I don't know how I feel about that move, but... I mean, I don't think it's bad. Takes takes check, putting pressure on the rook, but he's gonna have a lot of guys on that side. So, like, worst thing that could probably happen in this scenario is takes, takes, check, block. Oh no, he can't block that way, because queen would take. I was just afraid that we would just trade down too far which would kind of lose the advantage that we have right now. I would really, I don't want to lose this bishop right now. This bishop is doing God's work, I feel like. God's work. Getting rid of this pawn here at some point would be really nice too. Just opening it up. Let's see what happens. Okay. Queen, Queen defends further. Maybe he is hoping for a trade. Black definitely is hoping for a trade of some kind. Targeting the weak pawn. Okay. Losing one of the defenders on the knight. Uh, yeah. That's a shame. I didn't even think about that. Instead of doing bishop at that point, point, or I mean instead of doing rook to b1, to put pressure on this, I wonder if f5 would have been a good move, because if he did decide to, uh, what is it, castle on the queen side at that point, it would, uh, we'd be trading a bishop for a queen, which would be pretty hot, and then we would still have that nice, uh, pawn on e6, Maybe defend with the queen while also putting pressure on b7. That would be interesting. But that is not how it went. Doubling up the rooks. Okay. Yeah, that was going to come at some point. That's definitely going to be a sad day when I lose this bishop. And uh, controlling e6 now, so there's no more shenanigans like queen here and I'm putting that pressure there white doesn't care though he's just gonna break face and this makes sense because 
you can't move this pawn not only because of this but because of this yeah b6 is going to be met with queen takes a6 check and I mean that's unsightly unsightly indeed okay let's see what further happens bishop's been taken out okay and do we decide to just keep on going with the attack very aggressive very aggressive rook takes on b7 knights blocking blocking the line queen can still take them right <laughs> There's a uh, there's rook takes. The pawn on c7 is the holding defender. We're pinning that pawn now. Ooh, a nice move with the knight there as well. And now we're back in the position that we started at. <coughs> so let's look at the board from this state here. He's got five pawns. I've got four pawns. I used to have a really nice pawn set here not anymore uh, I sacked the, the or not me I didn't play this game I keep saying that uh, white sacked a minor piece for aggressive position and this looks really good um, king not in that much trouble on my side I still have a square this can definitely lead to some dangerous territories though, so I have to be careful. Uh, my rook and queen, I think, are the most coordinated pieces right now. This bishop is not in the game, really, and this pawn is going to fall soon if nothing is done about it. So overall, I'd say if, not, uh, if black is able to stabilize, white could be in some trouble. Uh, but Black's king is also kind of in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, he's going to get x-rayed, and there's a lot of a lot of interesting ways to go about this. First one I see is remove the attacker on the queen. So rook takes on b8. King has to take on b8. I don't really see the continuation from there though. If rook takes here, rook takes on b6, pawn takes on b6, queen takes on b6, check. But then there's ample enough room that I don't think the king is in danger anymore. So then the other other thought I have is something like queen queen to a8 but that's a bit slow not that black can do a lot of things the cool thing about queen to a8 is if knight takes then it's just checkmate instantly as the rooks are combined again uh, the way out of this situation for black would be for the queen to move away so that the king would have some flight squares. This pawn is pinned, as we've discussed before, so another idea would be maybe something like queen takes knight. But that doesn't seem that good either. The rook takes seems to be a good forcing line. But I'm just not exactly sure where this goes. Rook takes b8, king takes b8. Rook takes b8 check, or rook takes b6 check, pawn takes b6, queen takes b6 check, queen comes in, queens would have to trade, or uh, queen could take on d6, but then rook would take. So as good as rook to b, rook takes b8 looks, I don't think that's the right line. I 
Maybe a rook takes b6? No, that's not right either. Knight takes and then... Knight takes. Flight squares can be made. Hmm... Queen to a8. Queen makes a flight square. Take, runs away. Take queen to c7, and then he's gonna have. So queen probably shouldn't fly away to e6, just in case the king's gonna need more flight squares. So let's say something like this then. Another interesting way to fly away would be here to a4. But either way. Yeah, even if I'm able to take his knight and then this pawn and force the king to move. Oh, interesting. Oh my gosh, no way. I thought he would have enough flight squares and it wouldn't be so bad. Uh, but I might have to recalculate the line. So queen to a8. If knight takes, it's straight checkmate very quickly. So that's not the right move. Let's say the flight square is queen to queen to g4. Queen takes knight. Queen takes b8. Check. King to king to d7. Queen takes c7. Check. Then king to e6 or e8. Then queen could hit f uh, f what I call it f seven, and that would be checkmate because this knight would block possible flight squares for the king. So king moving to uh, e seven isn't the right way to go, I don't think. Uh, let's say queen to or king to e six. Um, that's very interesting. I wish we had queen to c4, but we don't have that. Seems like king to e6 is a good move. On king to e6, I still have queen to... Queen to f7, though, don't I? And then from there, uh, the king doesn't have a flight square because... Right. Because thanks to this pawn. Huh. Okay. Are there any possible blockers, then? Queen to a8. Flight square... Potentially, what if there's maybe a different flight square that the queen can use? Okay, let's say the queen actually flies to, uh, moves to c6. So, queen to a8, queen to c6. Where do we see this one going? Queen takes on b8, king moves to d7. This looks a little less bad for the king, because queen can't take anymore. If queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, and then king takes, and he's fine. There is this other rook to be played as well. I'm just not sure how that will be played. Yeah, I that line 
almost looked tricky and cool, but I don't think that's the line. I still have doubts that that would be the line. Queen to a8, queen to c6, queen takes b8, king to d7. Queen is now being stared down by two rooks on the back file, so or back rank, so that doesn't look good. I don't have a light squared bishop to help. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This is tricky. <coughs> If anything, this forcing line, I feel like the rook takes would be the right answer, but I just don't see it. Rook takes comes with a check, forced to take. But afterwards, what am I looking at? As we said before, once this opens up, the queen's able to help a lot. So maybe we don't open this up, but then the queen by herself can't really do a lot either. Well, yeah, I'm having a hard time with this one. I guess there's also rook takes this way. Another idea is rook opens this way. Oh, okay, I think that's the line that I should be looking at. So I think the line that I see is rook takes, or I guess to be specific, the seventh rank rook takes b6, and that'd be check, king can't move anywhere, so then the knight has to take, and then I was hoping that the rook could go back and checkmate him because there's no flight squares, but that's not true because the knight is still defending there. Mm. I almost thought I had it. Takes, takes, takes and then flight square is given again so that's not hot that's not hot I'm not happy about that another line would be maybe rook takes c7 queen takes c7 or even king takes c7 oh king has to take c7 because of uh, the double check so rook takes, king takes, and then there is queen a7 check, which is kind of interesting actually. I guess we should look at the line more. Rook c7, queen takes c7, or rook takes, <laughs> rook takes c7, king takes c7. Queen to a <coughs> seven check. King can move to c six or c eight. Oh no 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 no! Rook takes, king takes, then there's queen takes, and then yeah, he really is lacking flight squares actually okay so we were just looking at the wrong things to trade it took me a while but I finally figured out what I need to trade <sighs> so rook will take on c7 as a double check the king will be forced to move and take the rook at which point then the queen can just take on b6 there's no defenders and the king only has one real place to go which would be back to c8 at which point the queen can take on b8 and the king would be out of flight squares. All of this is forcing. There's no blocking lines. So let's do it. Okay. That took a little bit, but yeah. It uh <laughs> it took me 
didn't take me a little bit. It took me a while, but I'm glad I was able to find the line. Oh boy, this is a mess, huh? Uh, I would be... If this wasn't a real game, I would not find... Yeah, nope. I would not find anything. I would probably think that I'd have to sacrifice my queen for the two rooks just to just to be a little safe. My knight's pinned as well. This is a horrifying situation to be in. But uh let's let's go back a couple moves. This is a long game, so let's just go back a little bit into the just a little bit in the end game or the end of the mid game here. And let's see what's going on. Rook to c6, putting pressure on the bishop on d6. Bishop moves out. Ooh. Bishop on bishop on c3 is going to be delicious. Uh, doubling the rooks there. That's okay. That's a free pawn, and who can say no to a free pawn? But honestly, just cutting that rook connection there would be... Cutting the rook connection and then moving, uh, pushing that b pawn would be, if I was black, that would be some of the first things I'd be thinking about. Uh, Black's queen is in our realm, in a dangerous position. I would be worried about getting that stuck here. So maybe taking that pawn was a good idea. Take while you can. Get some flight squares, possibly. King's moving. Not sure why. Did he have to move? I don't know. But okay. Hmm. <coughs> the queen decides to stay in there. Hmm. This pawn is under attack now. King moves out of the way again. Queen takes that pawn. Defending this pawn from over here. Getting the triple battery going. Nice, nice. Blocking, blocking that battery. Sacrificing a rook. Okay. King's over here now. What are they thinking about? Just getting out of the way, probably, from the back rank. Don't want the diagonal, either. Becoming a nuisance. Still defending this pawn. Not a lot of defenders on this queen, though. Yeah, gonna push this queen around. Alright, so... Deciding to take their possible future pass pawn for one of our pawns. But he has four on this side. I'm scared. I'm feeling scared. Yeah, knight's looking a little shifty here. Get out of the way. Okay. Queen is staring at our rook aggressively now. Okay, rook comes out. Now he, this is looking like a checkmate situation. Alright, found a diagonal to defend. Now we got a lot of rooks, though. A lot of rooks there. <laughs> Found the one diagonal to stop the king. Or, I mean, to put pressure on the king. This looks valid to me in this situation. Maybe not. I'm not sure why we're not seeing this right now. Or, I guess after this, huh? Okay, blocking this way. Is that... That's not good. That's worse than my idea. How dare you? There's three attackers on this guy. What are you hoping to do here? Knight takes. Okay. This would be... This seems like the really the best time to continue on. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Very good. Defending <laughs> defending while also opening up and check. That's crazy. I feel like this wouldn't have happened if it had been there, but maybe my calculations are wrong, right? 
Mm, pawn to g6. There's no knight takes anymore. Knight takes, queen takes. Queen has to take, queen takes, and then this would be checkmate. So I feel like that pawn move was the big crusher for him. This is insane. This is this is a fucking this is a five head move there. All right, king could block this way. I mean, the pawn could block this way, but then there would be there would be a lot of trouble over there. That would be a soon to be mate. King moves out. Queen checks again. King is now in the corner. He still has a flight square on h7. So let's see where we are now. Um, imminent checkmate coming if we don't do anything. So definitely got to look for resources here. Knight can't do very much except defend on g6. Um, Queen's got it pinned. Both of the queen and the rook going to the back rank looks good. But I think it's probably the rook that has to go up because the queen has to take care of this potential flighty diagonal. So let's uh, calculate the rook going to f8 first. Rook f8, king force to h7. Then we have queen to queen to e4 check um, pawn has to be forced that's the only way to block this actually the other way is to block with the queen isn't it so there's two ways but yeah rook f8 queen to h7 queen to e4 Possibly queen to g6 to block or pawn to g6 to block. Let's look at the pawn one first. If pawn. Uh, if pawn is to do so, then there is queen back to b7. And we're controlling all of these files. Queen can't block, so that looks like checkmate. Okay. So let's look at the other line. Rook to f8, king to h7, queen to e4 check. Not the pawn, but the queen comes to block. What do we do then? What do we do? Well, at that point, I think we're in a winning game because knight takes, rook takes to pin, or king takes. Oh no, rook's the only one that can take because the queen's there. And then this rook is pinned, and now I can't get mated, so that'd be very nice. But that's no mate. That's no mate at all. Hmm. Hmm. So because the knight is keeping care of this flight square, that is another interesting thing to consider the whole time. But I'm honestly not sure how to convert into a checkmate from this line. Yeah, I don't see a lot. Hmm. If queen takes, rook takes, knight takes. We're in a worse endgame than if knight took. Doesn't seem great.
Oh, for sure. Actually, I just realized. Okay. So after rook to f8 and king to h7, I kept on thinking that the queen had to go to e4 to make use of this diagonal. But I honestly don't have to take care of this diagonal because, as we've been saying, the knight does take care of this square. So instead, after king to h7, there's this move here. And that's checkmate. There's literally no place for him to go. And there's no blockers that can get in the way. This is forced. Ah, very cool. Alright, I think I have energy for one more. So let's move this back a bit and take a look at this medium-sized game here. Oh boy, this is... Holy God, I'm wondering... Actually, I kind of want to go to the opening for this because I have no idea what happened here. What is this? What is this called? Oh. This came from King's Indian? Okay. Crazy. So I've been thinking about getting into the King's Indian, so this is kind of interesting for me. I guess it's not necessarily King's Indian if it starts here, is it? Is it? I don't know. Not good enough to say. Turned into King's Indian, I guess. Uh-huh. I've always wondered what happens if I how this tension is retained, but I guess it makes sense. If you were to take now, this would become... So, take, take. I guess he would have a turn to do this. And takes. I don't really know. I don't know the line very well. But, for some reason, the tension is retained. Now it's not. Okay, knight moves back to a very interesting square. Um, this is generally a square that I like if I'm not fianchettoing on, you know, that side. Because then he'd have a flight square over here. The aggression and control that I keep from over here with double knights on the third brink is pretty good, but this is a different scenario. White starts to go for a queenside attack. Blocks with the a5. Adding more pressure onto that side, getting the developing the bishop into the game, hopefully after this trade. This knight goes out to get to an even more delicious square over here, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's to do the it's to do that. Yeah man. I really want to learn the King's Indian. Okay, the trade happens. Oh, interesting. Offering up another pawn for a juicy bishop. We say no to that, or white says no to that. Knight comes back. Black doesn't really care about this as much as doing the most minimal amount possible to keep this from becoming an issue. Knights come back here, probably hoping for some more pushes. Trades going on on the queen side, minimal amount of reaction happens again. <coughs> Bishop can't go on and get into either of these squares. Nice defender on the g2 with that bishop in the back. And opening up this file to defend, adding another defender to this pawn, pushing more pawns on the king side. Knight's moving away, possibly to add more? I don't know what this is about. Maybe trying to go in here, but there's not a lot of good squares. I don't know where he's going. Seems like this is... I don't know. I guess we'll see. Maybe he wants to chain these up for better defense. Okay, we're pushing further now. This knight has a very pretty square, though. This looks good. We got double attacker here now, so that's 
This pawn's gonna fall soon. Ah, oh, backwards for defense, okay. Pushing queenside more effectively, very good. These kingside pushes are very slow, but it it is uh it's happening. Okay. A little bit of a pawn defense there, some lift as well as controlling that g4 square. Knight comes back in. Okay. Oh, this is the other knight. This pawn is still defended. Interesting, this knight is now in the game. Very cool, very cool. Bishop decides to come back out. Not too worried about defending this pawn anymore. Still got one defender though. Okay, that knight decides to come out. Ah, this is nice. Reducing one of the defenders. Yeah, this is this is good. This is good. Okay, rook's coming up to defend as well. Okay. So bishop takes care of one of the defenders. So now in this situation, I would probably take with the bishop so that... Hmm, actually... I mean, the queen can get out of the way pretty easily. So I don't know. Let's see. Knight decides to take. Okay. Okay. And then we move over there. Okay. Are there any dangerous squares? No, not yet. Any kind of... Tactics with the bishop? No. Okay, trading down on the queen side. Hoping to pass this pawn or this pawn. Definitely. Probably wanting to trade down the knights if possible. To reduce the attack on the king side. Okay. Black says yes, but you're opening. Oh, never mind. I was going to say you're opening up the pawn shield, but no. Queen can just take. So this feels pretty good for white, actually, right now. Still pushing those pawns. I mean, that's. I guess at this point, that's all you really have. This looks very tempting with the discovered attack there. <laughs> just pushing those goddamn pawns. Trying to lock the pawns down. King gets out of the way of the discovered diagonal. Ah, uh, but bishops found a weakness here. Uh, rook gets out of the way while also a discovered defender is found. The pawn push on the queen side continues. But counterplay keeps on happening. I feel like lockdown would happen, right? All right, queen's gonna try to open up this. King's moving out of the way of potential shenanigans on the H file. Rook takes one of those pawns. Queen is defending this pawn as well. I missed that. I missed it the whole time actually. So that's good that there is at least one defender there. All right. Bishop says, what are you going to do now? Rook's going to have to move. Rook moves back. That pawn looks pretty dangerous. But Black thinks he has enough time to do this. Okay. Ooh. But in doing so, he sacrifices a rook. Okay. So this is getting very dangerous. This is very, very interesting territory here. And this is where we are, huh? <coughs> and somehow from this position, we have a checkmate. Well, the F2 square is covered by this pawn, so that's good. I'm guessing... Well, I guess we should look at the board first. We got five pawns. He's got five pawns, but his pawns are just clearly better. 
Uh, both of our kings are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. His queen is very close to me, but his rooks aren't very active on my side. His bishop, if anything, is probably the real threat. This pawn is possibly the biggest threat. Uh, yeah, with a pawn push, if rook goes to d8, then I could trade down and promote another queen. I could also, yeah, so I could also do that thing that I was talking about, but it's my turn. We have a little bit of time. I'm not completely afraid right now. This is a dangerous position, but let's see what we have. So he doesn't have f2. So queen to h1, check. King to e2, queen takes g2, check. Oh, I see. From here, there's two possible flight squares that uh, the king has. Very similar to the last puzzle in a way. Uh, king can go to d1 or d3. Let's look at d1 first. Since we have this knight, or <laughs> this knight, this rook on the c-file, if the king does decide to go to uh, d1, then queen will just go to c2. And similar to last time, we have that kind of a check there, or a checkmate there. If he goes over to d3, it's still a checkmate because his possible flight squares are blocked by my pawns and we have the dovetail pattern as we figured out the name for that. Okay, so let's recalculate the line and see if there are any blockers or if there are any other flight squares that I didn't see. Queen to h1, king to e2, queen takes g2, and nope, these are the only two flight squares possible. Either way, queen to c2. This is a dark squared bishop, so isn't getting in the way. Doesn't look like there's anything that will get in the way. Okay. And here we go. Excellent. All right, so what was that? That was six puzzles. Seem to have gone pretty well. I'm fairly tired today, so I think I'm going to stop here for now, but... Hopefully I'll do a couple more videos this week. I'm really enjoying uh, the video format that I'm doing. I feel like I'm learning as well as hopefully being somewhat entertaining. It wasn't very entertaining today, but I feel like a lot of learning was done. Maybe not. But yeah, just continually practicing on reading the board and looking for checkmates. Um, if you're curious as to what the next video will be, it will be this, exactly this. I'll have a little bit more energy probably, so there's that. But if you've watched this, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Stop recording!